1966, without a doubt, was a very crazy year for tornado activity in the U.S. For the Candlestick Park tornado to an F4 that crossed the entire state of Florida. This year was serious to say the least. And as a whole, 1966 had dropped three F5 tornadoes on three different occasions. With one of them being the more forgotten but powerful Topeka, Kansas tornado that deserves more attention from the public especially for how well documented this event was in the mid-1960s. The city itself is very prone to tornadoes, and it's no surprise since the city is in the U.S. state of Kansas, which is located dead center in Tornado Alley. And on June 8, 1966, it happened. Everyone's biggest nightmare. A dangerous tornado had hit the heart of Kansas, and this is what happened. During the morning hours of the day, an upper level trough was moving towards the plains from the Rocky Mountains region. Meanwhile, at 6 a.m., a strong low pressure system in Oklahoma was responsible for the alongside warm front that was moving into Kansas. At 6 p.m., the upper level trough at roughly 18,000 feet was over the central plains with west-southwest winds of 60 miles per hour recorded at Topeka. Low-level wind shear readings were high, indicating the potential for strong low-level rotation in any storms persisting in the area, and possible tornado development. For the majority of the day, much of Kansas and parts of Missouri, including Topeka, was in a tornado watch, which may have saved many people's lives since the watch was well worn in advance. But then in the evening of that day, at 6.55 p.m., is when the tornado had touched down southwest of Topeka. But the problem about this is that the radar they were using wasn't the modern day Doppler radar, which is meant for scanning things like weather and tornadoes. Instead, they were using a surplus military radar that was donated to the National Weather Service from the government, which isn't the most ideal radar for tornadoes and other weather components. But at the same time, that is all they had to rely on. So this means that the funnel cloud before the tornado had dropped was actually observed and reported by person instead of the radar which couldn't detect cloud rotation. When the tornado touched down, it started traveling northeast towards Topeka. Then shortly later, the tornado hit its first structure, and all of the debris had been sucked into the tornado, leaving a debris signature on the modified military radar they were using. Now shortly later, the tornado sirens in the city were turned on and the tornado was going straight for a hill called Burnett's Mound, which will be very important, so keep this place in mind. Meanwhile this was happening, the news was on air, live, giving a tornado warning to the public. As the tornado kept moving, it plowed over the mound and the dense suburban areas of Topeka, carving a path of destruction to newly built homes in the path causing mass devastation. Unfortunately though, this is really not the beginning of the disaster. The tornado is not over yet and is still traveling northeast into denser parts of the city. At the same time, the news is urgently telling the public that this event is no joke and needs to be taken seriously. This was the moment in time that had very likely saved thousands of lives in Topeka, all because of the serious tone in the weatherman's voice. That's right. It's in this part of the city right now, 17th and Webster. Uh, at least one house was demolished there. Now all we can do, and the best service we can perform now, is to, I hope you have gotten the message by now, for the east part of Topeka, it should be alerted. The entire city was alerted earlier. It is now moving toward the north part of the city. If you live in the north part or on the northern edge, for God's sake, take cover. The next place the tornado was heading for was Washburn University, where not everyone had seen the tornado warning for Topeka, mostly because of activities taking place during the tornado. But thankfully, people at Washburn University were skeptical and did go into the basements of the buildings. 
When the tornado came towards the university, the campus had received a direct hit from the tornado, causing horrific damage or complete destruction to every building on campus, trapping many people under debris and rubble. After hitting the university, the next major place in the path was downtown Topeka. This is also where the worst of the damage would take place. This is one of three tornadoes that have hit downtowns at F5 intensity, the other ones being in Lubbock, Texas and Waco, Texas. But anyways, the tornado tore through the southeast side of downtown, hitting many buildings, including skyscrapers and the state capitol, leaving a massive hole in the dome of the state capitol building. Later, the tornado weakened and exited Topeka as it crossed the Kansas River. The tornado in the end had lasted 34 minutes, tearing a 22.8 mile path as it was moving on the ground at about 35 miles per hour. The tornado was given a top rating of F5, which is the highest rating on the Fujita scale, and the cost in damages was $250 million in 1966 currency. But today, the cost would be about $1 billion due to inflation. But most importantly, the people affected were unfortunately in high numbers. But on the bright side, it could have been higher if it touched down earlier in the day. But since the tornado struck after work and school hours, we thankfully saw smaller numbers of fatalities and injuries. But still, the tornado had still taken the lives of 17 people and injured 450 other people. Even though I said it could have been worse, the people who did survive the tornado still had to deal with some other problems that they were faced with. And yes, one of them is grief, but that's not all. See, the people who had survived still needed somewhere to call home, but over 800 homes were destroyed and over 3,000 other homes were damaged. This had led to displacement. This was extra hard to deal with since the city for weeks had no running water or electricity. The other things that many civilians had to look for was looting. Yes, looting. Looting is unfortunately one of the biggest problems people have to endure after a tornado, especially major ones. But thankfully there were no lootings because the mayor of Topeka had warned looters that they would be shot on site if seen looting. So yes, for the next couple of weeks after the tornado occurred, Topeka went through a hard time in its history. But in the midst of all this chaos, there was something in the back of many people's minds. So remember when I mentioned Burnett's Mound? Well, many people believe that Burnett's Mound was protection for Topeka so that whenever a tornado crossed it, it would disturb the tornado and end it. Well, unfortunately, myth busted that hill couldn't stop the tornado since the tornadoes are just too strong for hills to break them up. But we had just seen a perfect example of this. But there is something more to Burnett's mound. The mound was named after Abraham Burnett, who was Potawatomi Indian chief. And according to him, the hill had powers and would protect the area, as another tornado had happened in the same area in the mid 1800s where the victims of the tornado were buried on the hill. However, just years before the 1966 tornado had struck, a water tower was built on Burnett's Mound. This had raised many concerns from the people of Topeka, as they thought disturbing the hill would cause it to lose its powers to protect the city, according to the legend. Over the years, the water tower was built and everyone had slowly forgotten about the Native American legend. But just like we had mentioned, a deadly tornado had caused carnage to Topeka, including the tornado going right over Burnett's Mound. So do you think this is all of a big coincidence, or was it truly a water tower's fault that a tornado wrecked the city of Topeka? If you're going to type your opinion in the comments, just please don't make it a big argument. This tornado overall was definitely a very interesting event to uncover, but if you have any personal experiences of this tornado, I would love to hear your side of the story. 
other than that, I have nothing else to say. So see everyone later, and bye.